There is no question that the Dragon Rulers dominated the format after the release of Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. One other deck would emerge to contest the Almighty Dragon Rulers as it too received a powerful piece of support in the same set. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible Welcome to the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. WCQ season is upon us, and the Dragon Rulers have blasted away the competition. Not a single deck from the past 15 episodes has the power to stand up to the core of three daddies and two babies apiece. With one exception. A deck that Simo piloted to an unceremonious finish a couple of episodes ago, Prophecy got one new piece of support in Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy a little card you may remember called Spellbook of Judgment. This single spell card was enough to stave off a potential tier zero format, providing us with one deck that could beat back the power of the rulers, Prophecy. Now, Alex will be playing that deck and will fill you in on the nitty gritty, but I will be piloting the bad boys again, and I could not be more happy to do so. This is the list that ended up winning the EUWCQ. Prophecy is what it faced in finals and will be recreating that match. Now you'll note that a couple of things have changed about this deck since the last time you saw it. Of course, three Blaster, three Tempest, three copies of Tidal, and three copies of Redox is all but standard, and two apiece of each of the babies, Burner, Lightning, Stream, and Reactin, isn't particularly surprising as well. But we're now playing a Dragoonity Corsi as our singular one-star tuner, and also a Swift Scarecrow. This deck is fantastic on the crackback, able to leverage Big Eye for big plays. You'll also notice this deck seems to be built for the Mirror and Dragon Ruler players mostly built in this way. That's because the mirror was statistically the thing you would face the most. This was a golden opportunity for Prophecy, who was able to leverage that miss building to a quick game one victory. However, things get very bad for the spellcasters post board. You can see the side deck has Puppet Plant, Spell Canceler, Sukiyomi for Jaugen, Eradicator Epidemic Virus, and two Mystical Space Typhoon for that matchup in particular. Though I expect to drop the first game to Prophecy, we are boarding 13 cards for the strategy. Solved formats are never particularly fun, but this one got really frustrating post board. I hope to leverage some of that frustration against Simo. Outside of that, the strategy is startlingly similar. We'll probably play one more episode with this list in particular, but keep in mind, Dragon Rulers aren't going anywhere. And though Konami takes a couple of swipes at them in the coming ban list, and the ban list after that, they endure. As a quick wrap up, we're playing three Effect Veiler, three Maxi, a Book, a Card Destruction, a Dark Hole, a Forbidden Chalice, double Gold Sark, Heavy Storm Monster Reborn, one Sacred Sword, and triple Super Rejuvenation in the side. Alongside the cards I already mentioned, we've got an Electric Virus, a Swift Scarecrow, and two Vanities Emptiness for when we're going first. The extra, we've got Ancient Sacred, uh, Armory Arm, Black Rose, Colossal Fighter, double Crimson Blader, uh, the Buray, Scrap Dragon, Gaia Dragon, triple Mecha Phantom Beast, Dracosac, one Abyss Gaios, and double big guy. So with that, let me send you over to Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two of the Dragon Ruler special of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! We're probably not going to be done with this until the end of the year, if I'm being honest with the way things are going, because there is so much to cover here. But we have to introduce the rival, the antagonist, or protagonist, depending on your perspective, of the Dragon Ruler format, aside from the mirror match, and that was Spellbook. Spellbook was the only deck that could really stand up to the titan that was Dragon Ruler. There's another deck that sort of stands up to it, but we'll talk about that next time. But Spellbook was incredible, namely because in Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, not only were the Dragon Rulers released, but we received Spellbook of Judgment. If you have never read this card before, 
buckle up because this card is very ban worthy and there's a reason why it's been banned ever since essentially this format. During the end phase of the turn this card was activated, add spellbook spell cards from your deck to your hand, except spellbook of judgment, up to the number of spell cards activated after this card's resolution. This means that regular spell cards count as well. I'm talking about stuff like Upstart Goblin and the like, they all count towards it, which means you just get to plus off of every single spell card you activate. In addition to that, you can special summon from your deck a spellcaster type monster whose level is less than or equal to the number of cards you added to your hand by this effect. Now you can only activate this card once per turn, but ideally when judgment is around, you're trying to activate this before you do any of your other spellbook plays, add a bunch of spellbooks to your hand during the end phase, and special summon a Jalgin the Spiritualist, a stellar card from Labyrinth of Nightmare, which reads, neither player can special summon monsters, but also you can discard a random card from your hand to the graveyard, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. This means that if your opponent is playing Dragon Ruler and ends on like Draco Sack Pass, that you're able to Jalgin pitch two cards and blow up their board, and that's fantastic, right? And so this is why this deck was so powerful. Spellbook was specifically tailored to take down Dragon Ruler, and because Dragon Ruler was so focused on the mirror match, because you were more likely to see the Dragon Ruler mirror than you were to face against Spellbook, this gave Spellbook an edge specifically in game one because the Dragon Ruler players weren't prepared to play against it. That's what the sideboard was for in games two and three. And so game one, I'm hoping that we can just take it cleanly and hopefully games two and three, it may be a bit of an uphill battle, but we'll see what happens. So let's do the card by card. We have one singular Droll Knockbird. I'm guessing this is for like the Spellbook Mirror. I guess you could play Droll against Dragon Ruler, but it's weird. You kind of want them to burn their resources, but it does prevent stuff like Super Rejuve and the like. So this is a very strange card. And so I think we'll most likely be boarding this out. We'll see how the game goes, but this is just a weird inclusion, especially as a one of. Then we have one effect Veiler. Veiler is great because it's a spellcaster. It's a tuner, which technically enables our extra deck, which we're not really going to use, but it also just gives us a negation, which is nice. One Priestess of Prophecy. This card, you reveal three spell books from your hand to special summon this card to the field. And once per turn, you can banish a spell book from your hand or graveyard, target a card on on the field destroyed that target. 2,500 attack, not the biggest, but this is a way to close out the game. This is a very control oriented deck and it has a problem being able to close out the game with damage. And that's where High Priestess serves her role in just making sure the game can end a lot quicker. We have the one Jaugen. We pretty much always search this off of judgment. So we don't really need to play more than this. We have two Kaiku, which is an all-star against Dragon Rulers as well. Cause not only can we banish cards out of Joseph's graveyard when he inflicts damage to prevent him from going into more rulers, but we can also prevent him from banishing cards from the graveyard altogether for his effect, which means it's going to be a lot more difficult for him to summon while Kaiku is around. Then we have the main all-star, Magician of Prophecy. If he's either normal summoned or flip face up, you can add a spellbook spell from your deck to your hand. So this is important, the flip face up part, because that means if he's attacked, he will trigger, but also that means you can flip him down with your own spellbook of fate to get an extra search, which is pretty nice. But we need spellcasters in play to use majority of these spell cards, and so that's why we have a bunch of these here. But most of them are searchable, which is why the count is so low, but as long as we see one, that's typically all we need. Then we have 26 spell cards. So one Book of Moon, just because it's another spell card we can use in general, but it's also just versatile because we can flip down Magician, we can flip down stuff like Draco Sack, Big Eye, and that way we'll be okay. We have one Heavy Storm, a little bit counterintuitive because we do have some continuous spells in our own traps, but if it gets rid of stuff that's just problematic for us to deal with, this is fine. Two Spellbook Library of the Crescent. This card allows us to reveal three spellbooks with different names, and one of them randomly gets added to our hand. The problem is we can only use this if we don't have any spellbook spells in the graveyard, so you're really only going to be using this turn one, but there is another way around that. We have one copy of Eternity. I think I would prefer two copies in all honesty, but this is the first place list from the European World Championship Qualifier, so clearly he must know what he's doing. Eternity can grab any spellbook that is banished and add it to your hand. We have Spellbook of Fate, which has three different modal effects depending on how many spellbooks you banish from the graveyard. So the first effect is return a set spell or trap on the field to the hand. The second changes a monster on the field to face down defense or face up attack. Great for Blue Boy, but it's basically just Book of Moon, and the third and most powerful effect, non-targeting, banish one card your opponent controls. This is great because it bypasses Draco Sack, gets rid of large threats, and you're going to see me try and always have fate in rotation just so I have a disruption during Joseph's turn. Three Spellbook of Judgment because it's the most broken card in this deck. One Spellbook of Life. This card doesn't come up too often, but it is a monster reborn for the archetype with the spellbook name. We banish a spellcaster monster and reveal a spellbook from our hand, target a spellcaster monster in our graveyard to special summon it, so it's sort of like premature burial because it is an equip spell. The equip monster 
gains the level of the banished monster, which could be relevant for the extra deck, but you rarely go into it in this deck. You're just trying to bring back something like Kaiku or Jaugen with this, and that's good enough. One copy of Power. Power gives a spellcaster a thousand attack, and if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you add a spellbook card from your deck to your hand. We have three secrets, which searches every other spellbook card, including Magician. It's spellbook card, not spell. And then two copies of Master. Master is sick because you can reveal another spellbook in your hand, and as long as you control a spellcaster, you're able to copy any normal spellbook spell that you've already played this turn for its effect. So if you copy Secrets, you get another search. If you copy Power, you can double up and get double searches and give a monster 2,000 attack. You can also even copy Crescent, and it only copies the effect. It doesn't care about the activation condition. So you can, in theory, get another search with this, even though it is random. You can also copy Eternity to get another card from Banish. We also have Spellbook of Wisdom, which is a quick play that protects us from either spells or traps, only one spellcaster monster in particular. We have two Spellbook Star Hall. This is a new card that every time a spellbook spell is activated, place a spell counter on this card. All spellcasters gain 100 attack for each spell counter on this card. This is sort of similar to Priestess, where we're trying to find ways to close out the game, and because we activate so many spell cards, this is a great way to do so, while also making sure we maintain advantage, because if this card's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can add a spellcaster from your deck to your hand whose level is less than or equal to the number of spell counters that were on this card. So, fantastic conclusion. It's also another great way to get more trigger activations off of Spellbook of Judgment. We have two Spellbook Tower. This is probably one of the strongest single-handed control tools to ever be printed in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a field spell that says once per turn during your standby phase, if you have a spellcaster either on field or in grave, you can place a spellbook card from your graveyard to the bottom of your deck except tower, then draw one card. And when this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard, you can special summon a spellcaster type monster from your hand or deck whose level is less than or equal to the number of spellbook spells in your grave. This card also counts itself, so again, if this gets popped and we have enough spells in grave, we can immediately bring out Jalgen, and that is a nightmare for Joseph to deal with. We also have three Upstart Goblin, because keep in mind, Spellbook Judgment does not care if the card says Spellbook in the name, it is Spell Period, which means Upstart Goblin will count for this, which means we get plus ones off of every Upstart Goblin activation. We don't care about life points because we're just trying to control the game, and this gives us some more added consistency. Then for the traps, double Mirror Force, because we need to protect Jalgen, Kaiku, and the like. A Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, because we're going to have some redundant cards, like maybe Crescent later in the game, maybe something like Wisdom if we don't actually need it, or a second Spellbook Tower, for instance, and then we have Judgment and Warning rounding out the main 40. The extra deck, I'll be honest, is pretty much irrelevant. I think the only card you realistically ever go into is Shining Elf. If you ever have two copies of Spellbook Magician, you can overlay them both for Shining Elf, which is a Spellcaster, and it just has more attack, which is just relevant for getting in damage. But aside from that, it's not too often you're going to go in here. Veilers are only Tuner, so the Synchro is pretty limited in that regard. I guess Digusto Phoenix can get in some more damage as well, but uh, for the most most part, we're not really using the extra. The side deck, though, two more copies of Droll. We have a third Kaiku, which is probably going to come in. Three Dimensional Fisher, which is good against Dragon Ruler, because while it will trigger the big dragons, it banishes all their resources, so that means they're going to have less to use to bring back the big dragons. Double MST, uh, we have a Mind Crush. Two Mind Drain, this is a Floodgate that says, pay a thousand life points, neither player can activate effects of monsters in the hand. That specifically targets the baby effects, but also targets the big dragon effects as well. Mind Drain can be crippling if it resolves. We have two Retort. This is for the mirror match, so we're not going to side this. And two Rivalry. Again, everything's Dragon for the most part, so I don't think we need this for this particular matchup. But we're going to see if we can replicate the first second place match from the EU WCQ. And uh, this deck won, so hopefully we can repeat that performance. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Well, Joseph, welcome to part two of 10,000 of the Dragon Ruler saga of History of Yu-Gi-Oh. We're going to be stuck here for quite some time, my friend. <laughs> yes, we will. Yes, we will. And this time, you're playing the deck that was designed to beat mine. I'm sure that it's very good. Uh, it's it's something. Uh, there are a lot of auto wins, but after game one, it is a much different story because you have about, I don't know, 12 to 15 cards that you can probably side deck because... Yeah. I think what people may not understand is the ruler decks at this time were built specifically to beat the mirror match because that was statistically all that you were likely to see. And so in game one, that gives me a huge advantage because you're not playing like other stuff that would normally be good against a wider coverage of decks. Game two and three, however, it's going to be a much different story. So I'm going to be playing my heart out to try to win game one. Otherwise, uh, we might be in trouble, but yeah. let's see what happens. Shout the patron. It's volatile, just like my fucking deck. Thank you for the support. And uh, you got the hand up, buddy? Uh, I do. Let's go odd. It is odd. Three on Jaugen. 
Okay, uh, I was very nervous about the die roll, but we won. So hopefully this is enough for us to just win immediately. I will go first and pray to the RNG gods that my hand is good. Good luck, buddy. Uh, good luck to you too. Okay, I get to draw a card. Um, I think we can make this work. All right, let's try with a Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Uh, I'm gonna try to Valor here. We'll just see what happens. Uh, sure. That is fine. That is very rude of you, because I was going to get to do some cool things if that did resolve. It's not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and follow up with a secrets. Oh, that was the sixth card. All right. Well, it is what it <laughs> sometimes is. You just, sometimes you just draw it, right? Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, I don't think judgment's the play, sadly. So I'm just going to go for Spellbook of the Master instead. Gotcha. So we're gonna activate Master since I control a Spellcaster. I will reveal Grand Spellbook Tower and I get to copy a normal Spellbook in my grave. So we're gonna copy the secrets. Yep. And with it, we're going to grab uh, arguably the second best card in this deck besides Judgment. We're gonna grab Spellbook of Fate. Okay. Then I'm going to fire off the tower that you know about. I'm going to set two cards to my back row, and I'm going to hope and pray that I can somehow survive. Good luck, buddy. All right. Standby phase, anything? Nope. All right. Uh, dark hole. Well, uh, I guess we have to fire this. I'll chain Spellbook of Wisdom, target my magician, and call Spell. I was hoping you did not have that. That's fine. This um, fate requires a spellcaster on field in order to activate. So definitely need to try to protect if we can. Uh, okay, let's um, let's normal stream. Just normal summon stream. Yeah, that is fine. Battle. Okay, so now I have a decision to make here. So what I'm contemplating is that I think you can safely assume I have fate as the other set card. Yeah, I can opt to fate banish stream. I could fate. Uh, Book of Moon stream, or I could even fate Book of Moon my own magician so that it flips back up during combat and I actually get another search. I'm trying to think which one of those I like the best. I think in the interest of keeping my engine going, let's go ahead and activate fate. I'm going to banish secrets and master. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to banish wisdom. I'm going to leave master in the graveyard. Sure. Uh, I'm actually going to flip my Magician down, so then attack will continue. Mm -hmm. Magician dies, but I get to trigger the effect because it was flipped up, and I'll grab myself a copy of Secrets. Sure. Okay, second main. Yep. Uh, Sark. Uh, we're going to banish Red Ox, uh, get Pebbles. Okay. Uh, react in effect. Uh, we're going to pitch Tempest uh, to grab a Red Ox. Uh, we're going to banish Reactin and Tempest for Tidal. We're going to trigger Tempest here. We're going to grab Lightning. Sure. Overlay these two. We'll make Drake a sack. And then we will trigger Drake a sack. Get your tokens. It's fine. All right. Back to you. All right. So Lightning in hand. You're going to get Redox in two turns. You have a Tidal engrave. You have a Redox under the Draco sack. Okay. Yes. All right. We'll draw. Uh, standby phase. Let's go ahead and use Spellbook Tower. So yeah. I am going to put... Let's put Master on the bottom. And Sounds we'll draw good. a card. Yep. Let's go ahead and upstart Goblin. Okay. I'll take a thousand here. All right. Let's run out Kaiku. Shoot. That is a huge problem for me. Yeah. Go ahead and fire Secrets. Okay. Uh, sounds good. With Secrets, I will grab Master. Uh, then I'm going to activate Spellbook of Power targeting Kaiku. Okay, I'm with you. So he's 28. Then I'm going to Spellbook of the Master reveal life, target power, target Kaiku again. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, he's what, so 28? 38, because it gets the attack boost too. So let's go to battle. I'm going to hit over your stream. I'll take what? Uh, 22 here? 22, yes. Uh, I'll banish the Veiler out of your graveyard. Uh, title can stay. I think that's fine. Uh, and then because I killed a monster, I get to trigger power twice because I copied it with master. So I get to two spell books to my hand, except another copy of power. Okay. So I'm going to grab a copy of fate and I'm just going to grab another secrets for next turn. Sure. In second main, uh, I guess this is pretty irrelevant when I do this, but I'll just set one. And I think that's all for me. All Kaiku right. loses his power up. 
after I return. In your standby, I will just fate here and just take out the Draco sack. Uh, okay. I think I'm gonna banish this fate, this power, and this master. Okay. And we'll take him out. And he is banished. All right, main one. Turn one on Redox for you as well. I'm actually the greatest duelist in the history of time. I drew Forbidden Chalice. Uh, so I'll target the Kaiku here. Okay, so he is uh, negated. And now we will get Kraken, I suppose. Uh, let's banish Stream and Redox for Tidal. Uh, we'll trigger Stream here. You mean uh, Redox? Yeah, Redox, rather. Grab uh, Pebble. Uh, lightning to the grave here with a uh, reactant to summon uh, Tempest. Uh, we can overlay for Big Eye here. Big Eye, your guy, and get in for a ton of damage. I don't think that's exactly where we want to be, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway because it's funny. Uh, we're going to overlay for Big Eye. Uh, detach Tempest. I'll take your Kaiku. Um, I'm going to Veiler the big guy. That's what I was fishing for. Okay, uh, yeah. let's just go Tempest here then. Sure. Uh, we will go to combat. Uh, we'll go Tempest in. So I'll take 200. Uh, yes. And then... This chalice is buffing me. We'll big guy in. Big guy cannot attack. Ah, uh, but his effects are negated. <laughs> but it didn't negate the activation. Is that a condition? <laughs> If you veil or big eye, I still think Why you can't, can't attack. he attack? You're right, yeah. All right, well, you know, we did our best. Back to you. Okay, uh, I will draw. Stand by, I get to tower again. Yep. So let's go ahead and put fate on the bottom. Sure. And we'll draw a card. Yep. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start by activating Spellbook of Life. I'm going to banish the Magician of Prophecy Engrave and reveal secrets, and I'm going to special summon Kaiku. That's pretty good. It's not bad. So bring him out. Mm -hmm. His level is now six, if that ever matters. But, sure. Uh, we'll get to that bridge if we get there. Uh, secrets. Sure. Let's go for another copy of Master. That's fine. I control Spellcaster, so I'm going to go Master. Yep. I'm going to reveal Spellbook Tower. Yep. And I'm going to grab a copy of Spellbook of Eternity. I haven't seen this one yet. I have so not. So Eternity's cool because I get to take a Spellbook from my Banished Pile and put it in my hand. So I'm going to take Spellbook of Power here. Then I will Spellbook of Power the Kaiku. We'll put him back up to 28. Uh, we'll go to combat and we'll swing into your big eye. I'll take two here. Uh, I do get to trigger power though, so I get another search here. Sure. And I believe we're just going to go get the Spellbook of Fate that I put back on the bottom of my deck at the mm. beginning of my turn. Second main, I will set a mystery card. Could, Could be literally anything. be anything. Literally be anything, and uh, that will do it. I believe that Tempest returns to your hand. It does. Ooh, weird draw. Uh, stand by, I will grab my Red Ox. Correct. These uh, Mecha Phantom Beast tokens have been sticking around They've here. kind of been chilling, not going to lie. They have kind of been chilling. Okay, I mean, this is not a beautiful out. Uh, I'm going to normal effect, Valor. Yeah, so you can sync for a four or a seven. I imagine the pick Can you think seven maybe a seven I might want me. to go into here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you just have what? Two guys in hand? Uh, yeah, I actually think I'm gonna have to fate this. Mm -hmm. I could opt to banish Valor. I could also just set it. I don't necessarily have to hit it that way. Uh, I'm gonna banish Secrets, Eternity, uh, probably power again. Yeah, let's put power in the banished pile. We'll get rid of the Valor. All right. Uh, I don't think I can win from this position, but it's also going to take you like three or four turns. So uh, let's find it out. So I will draw. Standby Spellbook Tower. This card is crazy. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, let's go ahead and put Fate back on the bottom. Yeah, sure. And we'll draw another one. Okay. I'll go to battle. I'll hit one of these tokens. You got it. Then second main. Uh, I know your hand is Redox Tempest because you added Redox off Gold Sark and you added Tempest back from the field. Correct. Let's just set ourselves two back row. 
I just sort of assumed I wouldn't get to the position where I actually got the redox back, but I should have done blaster under those conditions. Uh, ooh, that's, uh, that's not great. Like you said, I still have to kill you, but... <laughs> do, do I know what these set cards are? I have no idea. You have no idea. I don't think you know anything. That's not true. The only card you know is uh, Grand Spellbook Tower because I revealed it off of life to activate it. Sure. Uh, I feel like I have just a little bit more time. Go ahead. All right, so we'll draw. Standby, I will use tower again. Yeah. Let's go ahead and this time we'll put secrets on the bottom. You got it. And we'll draw one. Let's just take out the token. Yeah, sure. Second main, I honestly think I just pass again. All right, let's try it out. Standby main. Oh, that's yep. that's a very interesting one. Wow, okay. Uh, so we're going to go for a redox here. Uh, I'm going to pitch a maxi, uh, and we're going to target the title. Going after title. I have no response to that. That's fine. All right. It's my boy. Uh, that's, you know, that's really as far as I thought I was going to get. Uh, we'll go to combat. I will try to walk in. I'm going to mirror force this. Oh, come on. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Um, second main, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Stand by. I have the last spell book to put on the bottom of my deck to draw another card. Yep. Okay. I think we can finally start making things happen. I am going to start by activating Spellbook of Judgment. Oh God, okay, yep. I'm going to leave Judgment here to keep track right, right, of the right. amount of Spellbooks I activate. Uh, next, I will summon Priestess by revealing Tower, Star Hall, and another copy of Judgment. Okay. Next, I will activate Star Hall. That is one on Judgment. Sure. I will activate a new Spellbook Tower. That is a second on Judgment. Still with you. Um, and this also puts a counter on Star Hall as well. And uh, unfortunately, it kind of ends there, but at least I can start getting the rest of my engine pieces back. So we'll go to battle. Uh, we'll hit for 19 with the Kaiku. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll take 19. And we'll banish your Max C and your Big Eye. Sure. And then Priestess for 26. Uh, that's fine. Then... I will proceed to end phase and resolve Spellbook of Judgment. That's also okay. Okay, so I get to add two, of which I will add a copy of Secrets, and I will add myself a copy of probably Fate. It's probably irrelevant at this point. I feel like I've got a pretty good block on the game. Uh, Yeah, we'll just grab Fate. That's fine. Sure. Over to you, buddy. All right, I will draw for turn. Uh, stand by me. Uh, I'm just going to pass. Just passing? Yeah. Okay, uh, standby. Yes. I will put, I don't know what I want to put back. I, judgment's like fine, I guess, but you know I already have one. I guess I'll put Spellbook Tower on the bottom. Mm -hmm. and I'll draw one. Mm -hmm. What do you have? Does your deck play like fucking Swift Scarecrow or something? Now you have me curious. All right, well, I guess we'll play it out. Uh, judgment again. Yep. Then we'll go Secrets. Yep. Secrets, grab Master. Activate Master, I will reveal the fate that you know about. Yep. We will copy Secrets to grab a copy of Wisdom. Yep. Uh, this is subsequently put two, uh, three, excuse me, additional counters on Star Hulk, because I activated Judgment, uh, Secrets, Masters. I guess go to combat? Yep. Try to hit? All right, I do have the Swifty. Oh, do you have Book? I don't have Book. But I actually have Spellbook of Fate. Oh, you're gonna banish. And your I can own guy. book. I can. Ba I don't have to banish. I can just book yeah. of Moon with the two effect my own guy and prevent your Scarecrow from resolving here. That's pretty good. All right, let's go to game two. God, that was so much work. Don't worry, Agreed. I boarded in twelve cards here, so either I'll brick or you'll lose on turn one. Uh, I hope it's the former, but good luck, buddy. <laughs> Good luck to you too. Uh oh, that's not ideal. We're gonna go. This is this is a very strange hand. I don't actually think that this accomplishes anything. This sucks ass. Uh, but we are going to banish Tempest and Blaster to summon uh, Red Ox. What do you mean that sucks ass? You get two searches. Yeah, but I didn't want to banish my entire hand to do it. Uh, we're gonna there. go uh, Blaster Tempest. Uh, we'll get these two. Burner and Lightning, sure. Then I'll use Burner. I think we I should actually, blaster this time. I, think I want to use lightning, as silly as it sounds, because I'd like more tempests to remain in deck. Uh, we're gonna overlay here. I guess we're just making a Drake sack again. I almost just want to give you the play. Uh, okay, we'll trigger the effect. Uh, we're gonna pitch tempest here. A couple of guys, and uh, we'll set two back to you. Two back row. Oh boy. All right. 
Anything in standby? IO. No, you're fine. Yeah, I wish. Main one. Uh, Let's start with a card we actually haven't seen yet. Spellbook Library of the Crescent. Yeah, sure. It's the power tool dragon of spell books, if you will. So with Crescent, I get to pick three cards and one of them is randomly added to my hand. Mm -hmm. So I think the call here is Secrets Master. Let's go Star Hall. One you goes to my hand. Hall, please. Next, let's activate Spellbook of Judgment. Horrifying. Yeah. Uh, wish I could do this before the Crescent, but Crescent requires me to have no spellbook spells in Grave, so it is what it is. Uh, let's try running out this Spellbook Magician of Prophecy and activating the effect. So with him, I will grab a copy of Secrets. Uh huh. We'll fire Secrets. That's fine. Okay. This is one on Judgment. Let's grab that Star Hall. Sure. Let's uh, fire the Star Hall. Yeah, Star Hall is fine. Thinking here. What's that on Judgment? Two on two? Judgment. All right, you've this got Master in hand. Uh, I'm going to go for... Oh, I did not. I thought I had a different card. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and fire Master. I'm going to reveal Spellbook Tower. Let's grab Spellbook of Power. Mm -hmm. One on Star Hall. Uh, let's activate Spellbook Tower. Yep. One additional on each of these. Then let's activate Power Targeting... Spellbook Magician. Let's go to combat. Uh, I'm going to try to hit in one of your Draco Sack tokens. That's fine. That will trigger power. Monster doesn't have to go to grave. Right. So let's grab a, probably a secrets for next turn. Um, I think if there's anything else. Actually, this is much funnier. I'm going to grab Star Hall. Second main, fire another Star Hall. And I will set two cards face down. Okay. And... I will resolve judgment for six. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's fine. All right, so we're... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to add secrets, master, fate, tower, eternity... Uh, <laughs> I'm out of, like, all of the ones that I want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what else I could add at this point. You know what? I'll grab life. Why not? Let's just sure. grab everything. Let's yeah. go for it. And then resolving judgment. Let's go ahead and bring out the boy. Yeah, there he is. And then still an end phase. I'm going to fate Draco sec. And this will put another two on my star halls here. Uh, let's get rid of secrets. Yeah, I could probably put Judgment away. And let's put... Uh, definitely don't want Crescent. We can get rid of that one. Over to you, my friend. <laughs> Interesting turn. Uh, stand by. I think it went pretty well. Okay, so let's begin with the funniest tech that this deck is actually playing. I'm going to normal summon Sukiyomi. Okay, uh, that is an answer. So even if I have a way to deal with it, it's an on summon effect. Uh, that's frustrating. Uh, what are you targeting, sir? <laughs> uh, you know, I think I'm going to go for Jaugen here. Yeah, I think that's probably fine. Let's go for Tempest. Uh, we're going to banish Red Ox and Lightning. Uh, Red Ox effect. We'll grab Peebles. Uh, we'll go Peebs here. Pitching Lightning. Go grab Red Ox. We're just going to make Draco sack. I, I'm not feeling great about it. Uh, anything here? Uh... I think I just have to fate this in all honesty. Oh, you do have the second fate. Did have the second fate. All right, uh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a little faster. Uh, a bit. I mean, I still had to kill you, but I mean, at this point, I have full control of the game, right? Yeah. Uh, my star halls just keep growing to make my spellcasters huge. I just reflip Jaugen, which, yeah, Sukiyomi can keep answering, be. but next turn, I'll book to be able to make sure Sukiyomi never comes back, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just have everything at my disposal. I get judgment back, so I get to get another, like, plus five next turn. Yeah, I can see why judgment's banned now. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was close. It was a close game, for sure. Um, I that game one was actually really fascinating. The amount of back and forth we had. It was long. I don't know how. Yeah, it was. It was interesting for sure. Do you want to do the game three? Yeah, I mean, I'm down if you are. Well, that was. Uh, those were quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the second one was uh, was fast, but the first one sure did take a while. I'm hoping this one goes the same way as the second one, except I 
uh, come out on top. Uh, I guess good luck to you. I'm going to see if I can find my sideboard here. I mean, in all fairness, you have rejuvenation, so I don't really feel bad that I judgmented for six oh, here. Yeah, so. same thing, same thing. <laughs> right, basically, basically. Okay, uh, I will tell you now my hand looks much different compared to those other two games. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine too. So, uh, Burner. Okay, go got Blaster. Blaster again. That's good. We'll go uh, Steam. Uh, let's Ooh. go get Tidal. Uh -oh. That's four discards. Make me nervous. We're going to overlay here for Drake Sack. Okay. Uh, we'll trigger the effect. Uh, we could keep going with... One, two, one. Oh, wow, we really could keep going. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna keep going, here we go. Uh, we'll go Tidal here, uh, banishing Stream and Burner. Sure. Redox here, banishing Tidal and Lightning. Gonna go for the double Draco Sack play? We're going for double Draco Sack. Uh, uh, we'll trigger the effect on the first one to get two tokens. Uh, we'll trigger the effect to tribute a token to target the other one, which can't be destroyed because we have a token. Then we'll trigger the effect to summon two tokens. Then we'll normal summon spell canceler. Go ahead. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, this next play How do I beat though. that? <laughs> uh, okay. Silver bullets from the sideboard coming in. I, I just think I lose here. I don't think I can beat this. Uh, if I had Kaiku, I could crash with spell canceler. But funny enough, I did not draw Kaiku. Who would have thought? I guess I'm not dead technically Pfft, i don't know how i'm gonna win this let's go set this it could be literally <laughs> could be anything and uh set a card and throw it to you all right stand by main uh, oh actually you can pop it with draco sack yeah. i do normal it yeah, you do. yeah i was like oh yeah you can just attack right no no this is definitely the play i i guess i thin my deck by one singular card to hope that i can get to kaiku fast enough i guess i grab master sure and a same result go ahead i'm so dead here but you know go ahead anyway <laughs> uh what's the punish mirror force exactly uh we'll just play around it a little bit wow all right so 21 Mm -hmm. 26. Uh, go ahead. Please? Damn it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, this is how this game could have gone. <laughs> I, that, that's the matchup, unfortunately. I... Upstart, Master, Secret, Book, Eternity, Tower. Dude, that's uh, a pretty I good was hand. ready to go. I was ready to go, but fucking <laughs> spell canceler. This was judgment. Like, I mean, it's fine, oh, but it can't late. deal with spell canceler. So, like, uh, a little late. This is I'm what curious I how many understand. outs I actually have to spell canceler, in all honesty. <laughs> is, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Dragon Ruler format's so cool. And I do think the mirror is uh, particularly skillful. But playing boarded games versus spellbook is just so boring. Like, yeah. the, you saw the spell canceler, uh, but I also had. Uh, Eradicator Epidemic Virus, you just make the Excellent. guy going first. Puppet Plant, you just take their uh, their Spellcaster and it turns off Fate. Uh, and because I had so much room, I'm on three of all of this shit. So <laughs> it, it's, I really did board in 12 cards. It, it was I believe really, it really because shocking. Like I said in the beginning, these decks were just prepared for the mirror match because that was statistically most likely what they were going to see. And yeah, if you ran into Spellbook and lost game one, whatever, you bring in Spell Canceler, Eradicator, uh, you know, Puppet Plant, all this, and Tsukiyomi game Su two and yeah. three, you should probably be fine most of the time, right? Uh, I think I counted, there are like four outs in my deck. So I have double Mirror Force, assuming you actually attack. I have a Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, triple Kaiku, which only crashes with it. So it doesn't even like give me a dude on the field to activate spell cards after the fact. I guess technically Priestess, if I have three spell books in my hand, which theoretically I'm not activating any of spell cancelers on the field, but the deck was only on one Priestess, because I think by this point people realize Priestess is kind of a brick. Thank God for that, because I feel like in game one, Priestess showed up at like just the right time where I feel like I wanted it. Uh, I feel like maybe I could have played game one a little better. I was prioritizing Dracosac turn one, and maybe I should be prioritizing Big Eye versus you. Even so... You know, it, it is a hard road to toe going second against um, Spellbook. Uh, your deck, you know, it did what it was supposed to. Uh, game one, yeah. it uh, was able to win a close one, um, which is how, you know, pre-boarded games kind of were for this deck, um, even though you are pretty much already targeting Dragon Ruler out of the starting gate. Uh, sure. Game sure. two, it was able to find judgment before I found any of my, you know, Hail Marys <laughs> from the uh, sideboard. That's kind of what this deck did, and that's kind of all yeah. this deck did. 
And like, yeah. um, it, though Prophecy did top a lot of times, calling it the same tier of playable as Dragon Ruler, especially at this point, is uh, maybe a little bit of a misnomer. It certainly is built to beat it, but it, you, you can't help but look at turns that start with like, oh crap, I didn't find Secrets Blue Boy and think that maybe this deck uh, needs a little more help. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's no surprise that on the Massacre list that is right around the corner for both of these decks, I say right around the corner, but we're still going to be in this format for like another like 10 episodes probably. Mm. Uh, but Judgment goes, all the babies go, like that's just like where everything gets slaughtered. And uh, Spellbook and Dragon Ruler are easily still playable. Can uh, you just believe the without babies their... go, by the way? They were like, that's the problem, yeah. the babies. I mean, the babies are kind of nuts for they Super Rejuve. They're, I mean, they bear Super Rejuve on top of it, but the babies just allowing you even a further additional summons is just insane. Yeah. So I, I get it after we've played this deck a few times, but I am very glad that we got to just demonstrate what Spellbook is able to do. I remember I played Prophecy like several episodes back, only because we were playing it up against a deck we actually wanted to showcase, and I didn't really get to sh really show off what this deck is capable of doing and that game one i think exemplified exactly how this game wants to play i mean obviously if you can stick jaugen as soon as possible that's more ideal but we got to see some of the more grindy aspects and we got to see the power of a card like grand spellbook tower mm -hmm. right literally that card drew me nine cards over the course of that game oh, yeah. oh that it's it's crazy if the game slows down to a crawl this is the best position you can be in by a lot so guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So big shout to Shout1317, Moto, Cameron Smith, Tim00x3, Chaotic Meatball, MBT, Play Medulce, Eka, Iron Fang, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, Synchro Guy, Ole, I Ship, MBT, and Simo, Draconic, Rockslide, Jordan Coons, Iron Blades, and Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Lou, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Phoenix the Immortal, Cody Bretz, John Two Base, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, Give Me Speed Warrior, Give Me Death, TC Gaming, Thanks for the Sleeves, Dad, Matthew Brady, Max, MBT's Gamer Word Pass, Tom Russell, Twinkle Muncher, Why Read Cards When You Can Just Click Buttons, Valen Jackson, Orange You Glad I Didn't Say Alpha Tribute Ben 10, Helios 515, Thank You, Simo, MBT Gage, the RJB Zero, and Ruxin 34, MBT fans scare me more than COVID, Simping for Simo, Stolfin Amethyst, Tyler H, Nicholas Carpenter, Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers, Mike Ty, Rev Skinner, Nim Noodle, Mallow Branch of the Burning Tunnels, Stella and Zoe Vermillion, Wonder Waffle, Skull Servant, and the Wandering Doomed are boyfriends, MBT canceled by all communities soon canceled by all committees soon canceled by all players soon not reading cards makes the game interesting and you know it thundertaker versus simo and mbt hunter reed and shrugs thank you so much for watching the video and we will see you next time